Welcome to the that James built. I hope you're well, thanks for joining me on the boat. Uh, today I need to crack on with the port side under gunnel wiring trough. Last night I managed to do the starboard side, uh, so I'll show you that in a minute. Um, really happy with how it's turned out to be honest. It's gonna serve its purpose nicely. It's There was a few issues I had to do, a few kind of tinkering around the edges uh, to get the solution to work, but it works, I'm happy with that. Certainly as it's gonna be hidden, it really helps. Uh, it just needs therefore to be, uh, it just needs to work. It just needs to uh, to be secure and stable and do what it's designed to do as opposed to look pretty, which it doesn't, um, but it's not gonna be visible anyway, so that's fine. Um, Paul has come round today um, to do the uh, to do the welding for the installation of the water tank. We've got speaking about the size of the tank um, and the potential risk of having it too full uh, for too long, and what that might do to the balance of the boat when she's on the water, um, which is something I've obviously considered. Um, but that coupled with the fact that um, it's just a physically massive tank, coupled with the fact that um, it is going to encroach in how I design or lay out the bow, and given the fact that yesterday my heating solution conversation transpired that unless I um, find a lot of money, um, or find the product exceptionally cheap, which either of which are unlikely, um, I'm probably going to have to go for a calorifier, which is going to be basically a hot water tank that's going to physically need to sit somewhere. And therefore, if I was to replace the massive water tank with a slightly smaller one, um, maybe a 200 litre one instead of 450 litres, then I will have physically some space to put in the calorifier. So there's advantages both ways. Um, the other advantage of the water tank of swapping it is because at some stage I would have had to engineer a filler cap system into that water tank, which would have meant taking, most likely have meant taking the water tank out of a fitted bedroom and the bedroom fitted around the tank. So all things considered, I think I'm going to change my tank and get a smaller one, which will hopefully fit into the bow in a better way. So that's one thing that's changed. The other thing that's changed, um, actually my friend Steve, he writes lists out as I have to on this and colors everything in yellow once it's done. Um, so I think I'm about, in Steve's system, I'm, I'm about 3% yellow at the moment to give you an idea of where I am on this weekly list. So, uh, but one of the jobs that has come off the list, um, and that was as a result of um, a comment made by Jeff yesterday, is the pocket door uh, in the bathroom. It's, I've had a look at the system. He's right, it's just gonna reduce the head height too much. Um, so you're yeah, not having a track in the floor is one thing, but it's the head height. And I don't want people to walk through like that. And I don't have to walk through like that. And you know, if you get a bang on the head, if you forget to walk through like that, that you don't want that. So um, I think, Jeff, you are right. It's gonna have to be an old fashioned, boring hinge system, um, which I know my friend Will is gonna be upset about because he loves a pocket door. But I think for, certainly for the front bit of the bulkhead for the bathroom, I think I'm gonna have to just do a swing door. So that's something off the list. Well, then a new thing on it, but anyway. So I'm going to crack on with the gunnels under the port side. I'll show you the starboard side. Let's get cracking. As you probably realise, no job can start on the boat without spray foam insulation. Something to do with spray foam insulation. So I've trimmed this one off and I'm about to put some more in. I'm going to fill up this gap here, which is going to go in behind the new trough. Right, I'm going to take the uh, thing in, and oh, they give you some little gloves, it's nice enough. Right, so, give me that, I'll start at that end. Oh, 
close that in. Right, so without diddy dallying, I'll put that in there and you'll see what we have done. I don't know if this is going to work now, put them on. It's going to work on this one, but it's not going to work on some of the other ones. So I've put these little braces on to fix it, but it can only, it can only work because I'm able to slide it in. So I'm going to have to rethink that for the next one. quite got the clearance on it and I don't really want to go for a bigger screw so I'm just going to countersink it a bit. holding it there and now to hold it onto the back wall obviously the back wall is only nine mil thick so that's not really going to give that much of a hold even though it's kind of holding on on its own um, what I want to do is just screw it into the back plate but I'm going to do that where the vertical braces are going up and obviously I know where they are firstly I've mapped it out but secondly I can see the screw holes so I'm just going to go in above them. Yeah, that's a nice tight fit. Right, last one. I don't know how well you can see that with the shadows, but that first part of the trough is in. This part here was never gonna be a particularly attractive or flush fit, only because that upper wall is on the angle. 
but quite frankly, as long as it's a true tight 90 degree fit there, which it is, it's glued and screwed on that side. It's being held in there. It's solid as you like. It's only gonna support a few cables. Uh, well, I say a few, quite a lot, but still they don't weigh much. So that's gonna be absolutely fine. So quite happy about that. Although, as I said, this, uh, this, this idea only worked because I was able to put it in and then slide it along, which I can do for most of it, but obviously it's gonna to get to the point where I won't be able to do that. Um, so I'm gonna to have to come up with a uh, with another solution for that last bit. It might just be lots of glue. But anyway, I'm happy with that. And then if I've got some more left over, I'll fill up some of that, that void there with a bit more spray foam. Yeah, good. Okay, so I've done this gunnel and I've filled in where the spray foam insulation is. I've put these struts in here just to hold up where the seams are. So that's a join there. So I don't want the foam to push one of those down and for them to be out of kilter. So I put one there and one there. My other actual struts didn't, they were too long for this particular job. So I've just had to make some props. And you can see that I have rather messily filled in a bit of the insulation. There's a bit more to fill in, but I am really happy with how they've turned out. I've had to um, change my process a little bit for this last one to fit in here. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's gonna serve the purpose that it needs to. So uh, I'm happy about that. I can run all of my 12 volt cables down there. I can hang cable management system and ties and bits and pieces in there. And it's a nice tight fit. So it's not gonna go anywhere and I'll have an access panel. I think I'm gonna go for a hinged and magnet access panel. If I can be, if I can be bothered to do it, I think I will, because it, it will make it much easier to access them. And I'm gonna be accessing them probably quite a bit, certainly in the next few months thereafter, hopefully not at all, but it just makes it easier this way, I think. So there we have it, the port side under the gunnel um, wiring trough has been put in place. And I must say, I'm rather happy with how that one's turned out. So there we have it. Um, that's another job ticked off the list and I must say, I'm really happy with how they've turned out. Um, you can see this side here, I've just spray foamed this side here has been trimmed. So that's what it'll look like. It's all pretty neat and tidy, to be honest, once it's all been trimmed up. There's only a few little overhangs, which is no big deal. So um, yeah, glad with how that went on. My next plan now is to crack on with the ceiling. So I want to get in my sheet of six mil ply, get it to size, offer it up and see what the curve or what the angle is like in the middle. And then, and, cause now I've mapped out where my lights are going, I can possibly, if it fits and it works and that system's gonna work throughout the boat, then I can crack on with that. I also can crack on with building the bulkhead for the bathroom right, pretty much right behind me. So still obviously a lot to do, um, but I'm delighted that's gone in. Now I can get some cabling put in place and start to make, get my head around all of that. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this has been useful for you. If you need any undergun or trunking being done, then that's my way of doing it. Thank you for watching, take care, look after yourselves. Until next time, bye bye.